I sat and watched as beautiful wooden speedboats would cross the lake from Milan, Italy, and dock at the dock directly in front of the Swiss bank that I worked for in Lugano, Switzerland. The trip was relaxing, never really any bad weather, and even in winter, Lugano actually has palm trees. The boat would dock at the wharf. Big suitcases would be unloaded from the boat onto the dock. A helper would come from the bank across the street from our bank to the dock. So there's the dock, cross the street, there's the headquarters of the bank. Very convenient. The helper would then pick up the suitcases, one in each hand, and would walk back across the dock, covered in a red carpet, all the way to the bank. And just another Italian bringing cash to deposit in our bank. Pretty sweet, huh? But the problem, of course, is that that means, uh, well, let me put it this way. If tax evasion was an Olympic sport, the Italians would win the gold every year. So I worked for several years as the treasurer of a Swiss bank. And what we saw was this come in all the time. We saw the money come in on boats, okay? It was the fourth largest Swiss bank, so and it was right next to Milan, it was right next to Italy, a nice little boat ride, and that was it. So no customs to, to get in the way of a nice transaction. So what did we do with all that cash coming over in a flotilla of small boats? A major part of my job was to invest the cash that the bank had. We literally had a flood of cash to invest every single day. Part of the job of a bank treasurer is to use that money to fund loans that the corporate loan officers made. Frankly, there's not a lot of opportunities for the loan officers to lend money in that part of Switzerland. It was just simply too sleepy, too small. So that gave me a large pot of money that I had to invest and make money from that cash. Being a Swiss bank, we were very conservative, and most of the portfolio was in money market instruments that matured within 90 days. But sometimes we would extend our maturities and lock in higher rates by buying longer dated government notes. Now, there's three major things that I had to consider when investing longer term. Number one, the interest rate that we would receive. Number two, was the relevant bond in a bull or bear market? And third, was the relevant currency in a bull or bear market? Let me explain. Most of the time, the yield curve is positive, so short-term interest rates are lower than long-term interest rates. So buying notes would pay more than buying short-term bills. So, so far, so good. But bills really have no price risk. You hold them to maturity in 90 days and you get your money back. But notes are very different. We would have to hold them for 10 years to guarantee that we would get our money back. And now in the meantime, the price could go into a big bear market like we're seeing right now in the market, and we would be making a higher interest rate but losing money on the actual price of the note. So that meant we wanted to buy only notes in bull markets. Okay, third element. But then we have to consider the currency. If we bought a Japanese note that passed the first two criteria, but the yen was in a bear market, then we would still lose money as the value of the bond went down because it was in yen and the yen was declining. So we also wanted to only invest in notes that were denominated in a currency that was appreciating. So where are we now? Well, the yields of major companies like the United countries like the United States, Germany, UK, etc., are in major bear markets. The yields are going up because the, there's a bear market in the bonds themselves. Japanese bond yields are basically flat. 
there's a little teeny bit of a bear market, but basically they're flat. So yields are skyrocketing in the US, yields are stable in the yen. So a Japanese investor would make far more money investing in something other than Japanese debt. And remember, Japanese banks, insurers, the post office, and the government are massive holders of global long-term debt. So they're seeing higher yields in the US and a much stronger dollar versus the yen, but the value of the notes are declining. But when you blend all of that together, it makes sense for Japanese debt investors to sell their Japanese holdings, convert to dollars, and buy U.S. debt. But notice that this starts a cycle that perpetuates the long dollar price action. Sell yen, buy U.S. dollars, buy U.S. debt. That boosts the dollar and the U.S. debt up, so they sell more yen, debt, convert the debt, convert the yen to dollars, et cetera, et cetera. So the conclusion is very simple. Right now, we're in a very bullish dollar-yen situation. And oh, by the way, now I've explained my job. Now you have the qualifications to be the treasurer of a Swiss bank. Talk to you later.